However, again, to return to the basics of empowerment, yes, you need to attend to your personal vibration. When you wake up in the morning, what do you do? Are you filled with, or at least aware of, a sense of awe, a sense of gratitude, a sense of awe to be alive, even? This mysterious thing of existing and being conscious. No scientist, no biologist can still to this day find the source of consciousness. They can find inside the brain all kinds of flares. When you feel anger, it's over here. When you feel peace, it's over there. When you visualize something, it's over there. But where is the one? Where is the one that's seeing all of it? No piece of gray immaterial matter can explain something as alive, dynamic, intelligent, tangible, feeling, intuitive as consciousness itself. That is because the body does not produce consciousness. Consciousness produces a body. It's always been like this. It's a fact. It's not a belief. It's a fact. And more and more we will know this. More and more we will collectively accept this. And so if you are not a body, but a body is one of the aspects of your expression of self, of true self, of consciousness, of state of being, of vibration, of the non-physical you, that is the you even when you die, even when you dream, even when you're unconscious of your physical circumstances for a moment, that I that continues, that consciousness that includes and contains all aspects of you, even beyond this life, that you presently can't remember because the brain can only know what it knows from this life. If I'm consciousness and this body is just one of my reflections, then why can't I remember the past before this body? It's because memory is a function of the body as we use it. It is possible to remember past the extent of the body, and many people around the world have done this organically, naturally. And it's possible to train this. But you have to start drawing upon a power, upon consciousness, upon consciousness itself, rather than using the dullness of brain to try to remember something. You need to be in a high, higher expanded state to actually be in touch with that level of consciousness that already knows and remembers more of oneself. And even then, this whole process too is guided so you will not remember what is not relevant for you to remember because it would distract you from your life, which is the most important choice you are making at present is to be this particular body. All energies are going towards that as we speak. All guidance is checking in with that 24-7, guiding this, being available to you. There's guidance available to you from other levels of your consciousness that are invisible, inexplainable, that are intuitive. Through meditation, these things can become more scientific to you. It doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. You can make this as real as you want to for you. You can shift your paradigm from the physical and the limited and the linear to the non-physical and the abundant and the infinite and the non-linear. More and more your sense of being can shift to that. But what do you do when you wake up in the morning? <laughs> and some days when my body feels groggy, I'm guilty of that too. But in general, it's important to have, to have a sense of awareness when you wake up of self. Wait a second. I'm awake again to the physical. <sighs> Why was I here? What is most important to me? How would I like this day to turn out? And adjust your control panel, your DJ booth, the knobs on your internal state of being system. Wait, 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 wait. Adjust that accordingly. If you want a little bit more beat, you adjust that. <laughs> Whatever it is, you express yourself newly, deliberately. And it's okay. Whatever you feel when you wake up, it's okay. Acceptance always comes first. At some point, acceptance becomes less and less necessary because you already accepted everything. You've already practiced that vibration of acceptance. You already are okay with emotions feeling bad. You already know, you already have the belief system in place, anchored in, that when you have a negative emotion, the first response that comes out of your belief system that you've trained is, oh jolly, <laughs> I feel bad that this is great. This is great because what's the science behind feeling great about feeling bad? is to have a very clear, pristine understanding 
It's the fact that feeling bad is your higher self disagreeing with what you are presently suggesting or a vibration or a belief system you are holding within your field of consciousness and that you have the power to let it go. Otherwise you would not feel bad. So if you feel bad, whether it's in the morning or any time of day, it is a great compliment to how far you've come and where you're about to go. Because you see, if you would not feel bad, that means you would not be ready to transcend that particular belief system, which make no mistake you have, you have a lot of limiting beliefs. If you feel happy, that is great. It means you're in alignment with your active belief systems. You're where you are presently capable and desired to be. However, if you feel unhappy, it's an even greater compliment. Because if you feel unhappy and contracted, it signifies that what previously satisfied you, you are now having extracted all benefit from that and you are now ready to move on to the next thing. That's why it feels bad to suggest the same thing you did yesterday, which yesterday felt great. So when upon waking up or any time of day, you feel bad, it's higher self pinpointing, navigating you to become aware of something that you are ready and capable and desires to let go of so that your life can start to boom, flow in with such much more abundance and freedom and capacity, and intelligence and love and affection, satisfaction. So feeling bad, if your response to feeling bad is, oh, fuck, I feel bad, then that is your choice to feel bad about feeling bad. Those that have trained themselves to be unafraid of emotional feelings because they've learned to interpret it both from a state of eternal self is unaffected by whatever emotions come, good or bad. But even my chosen self can feel however it wants to feel about the emotion that is presently occurring. If I'm being stubborn and arrogant and I believe in an old point of view and I believe I shouldn't be having this feeling, then I feel worse and worse and I'm entering a downward negative spiral. But if my first response can be trained to become, oh jolly, <laughs> look at this negative emotion that is not me. It is simply telling me that what I'm suggesting to my creation at this timing is not me anymore. I'm ready to move on past this point. Does that make sense? So next time you have a negative feeling, what will you experience? <laughs> Good. <laughs> Practice that, practice that, practice that, and acceptance, and even more than acceptance, using acceptance as an immediate trampoline into an upward spiraling energy of further expansion, integration, creativity, abundance, and creation, is to anchor in this first response. And you need to have a belief system in place before you can do that. Because belief system responds before you can consciously adjust, okay? So if your old system still responds and it feels worse about feeling bad, you have to make those alterations with your physical mind. You have to make new suggestions to yourself. You have to start to see it from a more expanded point of view. Go back to faith. Go back to a bigger perspective. See how an emotion is just energy in motion. It's not harming you. You don't have to be afraid of feeling that it's not destroying you. Or even the feeling of being destroyed is happening in timeless, free, untouchable awareness. I'm being destroyed. Oh, jolly. <laughs> Nothing is actually happening to the eye that is the witness of this all. And so even when I feel at my worst, I can feel at my best, non-physically. Use that transcendence as a permission slip into allowing negative emotions to be instantly accepted and not only accepted, but defined in a positive way. Does that make sense? The quicker you learn to respond in this way, the less and less you will start to spiral downwardly the more and more you will become a powerful creator and you will then, like I was saying before, actually learn to harness the powers of the universe. Use law of attraction for your own benefit, but also with that for the benefit of all. Because the bigger you become, the more powerful you become, the freer you become, the clearer you become, the emptier of a rigid personal self you become, the more you are able to share and give and inspire. Does that make sense? So work on your frequency, your state of being. Make it as you want it to be. Be optimistic again. You have the power to change how you feel. Just listen to the feelings, but, but don't be distracted by them. Listen to what the feelings are suggesting. They suggest that a belief is ready to be let go of. What is that belief? What must you believe is true in order to feel so bad? Oh, what does that signify? 
if I would be really nervous, if I had a belief about being speaking on stage, that that is like I could somehow be at stake, like I could lack my existence, I could lack my love, my freedom, my capacity to live the life I want, if I stand in front of 150 people or thousands online and make a mistake. If I had that belief, and I've had it in the past, then obviously that which excites me, which is to be here and to share this with you, would scare me as well. I would feel bad. So why do I feel bad? Well, the question would then be, what must I believe is true? For example, my freedom can be taken away when I speak on a topic that people don't like. My affection, my appreciation, the people that follow me on Facebook, they could disappear. So, <laughs> bye. <laughs> I do appreciate you, make no mistake. <laughs> I do, because together we can make changes.